Jack Sprague out in front in the NASCAR Bush Series. First race he's led since New Hampshire in August Brady. 1993. Brady. He spent a lot of time Brady. since then in the truck Brady. series. His group, Brady. Dennis Connolly, Brady. Brady. did a great job on pit road. Goes from third to first, takes the lead here. Restart lap 45. I think once he gets out front, he's going to be pretty hard. I think he'll be somebody that's going to be tough to deal with. Jimmy Spencer was the first car lined up oh. on the inside. Couldn't get a lap back. Oh, trouble down here. Who is that? Is that the 26 or It is. Amick. Oh, no. Oh, no. A car just turned down. down. One car just turned over. It's upside down on the back straightaway. It's Michael. Holy oh, cow. What is he doing? He slammed into Amick, Daryl, and that flip turned the car right over. Look at how he hit him with the right front. Well, he needs to get out of there. Come on, buddy. Get that fire extinguisher up here. You okay, Michael? Lyndon Amick spun between turns one and two, and sliding down the racetrack was collected by Michael Waltrip. Well, he's such a, you know, Michael is 6'5", he weighs about 230. Uh, it's hard for him to, he can't just jump out of the race car. But I think I see him down there. I think I see him in there moving around. Yeah, he was moving around. The, the picture froze because of damage done to the, uh, the in-car camera mechanism by the flip. The antenna is buried against the asphalt. So all we saw was, uh, was a couple of stills, but it did indicate that he is moving in the car. You Which saw real good. quickly on the side of his seat, LaJoy's seat. That's a seat that is designed by Randy LaJoy. We talk a lot about Jeff Burton playing a role in, in safety for drivers. Randy LaJoy been doing this with the seats for a long time. Now, I've been in there like that, and it, you want to cut the seat belt loose, or you want to undo the seat belt, but if you do, you fall down on your head, so you got to yeah. be, you can see he's trying to move around in there and get himself in a position to get out. But with all those headrests and the Hans device and everything else, upside down is not a good place to be. Michael Waltrip had a wreck at Bristol, Tennessee, where there was not very left of the car. He's fine. He's just, uh, wow. Thank get goodness. Out, but he's okay. Yeah, I see him now. Could be that some of that uh, fire extinguisher powder, you know, he looks like he's, yeah, he's looking just, to see what. No, just, how's my car? Yeah. He's fine, Daryl. When you start looking, how's my car? Yeah. He's okay. Yeah, that's kind of the first. Now, remember, Even when you're hurt, you always want to know how the car is. Remember, he's the driver and owner of that car. Let's see if we can see. Well, well I know what started all this. 26 car back here. He gets around on his own. People start taking evasive action. He's coming down the hill. All of a sudden, here, here comes, comes Michael, Michael right there. Just there it goes. over the left front, catapults him upside down. Just turned him right over. Several cars involved. See the 26 car get around right there. And everybody's trying to crowd down to the bottom. Knowing he's going to go to the bottom of the right. racetrack. The 54 car. Yeah, Kevin Grubb. Kevin is Grubb. So is Casey Kane. Yates's car. Casey Kane, 98. Now from Johnny Sauter's car. Oh yeah, the 26 just gets around backwards. Let's ride with Lyndon Amick. Boy, that thing had been no warning. You see Michael go by right there. Yeah. Oh, man. Linda Namick taking a couple of hard shots. Yeah, there. that old, old Dr. Pepper car was getting hit from all angles. Yeah, at 10, 2, and 4. It was so crowded there, more right where Michael was. There was cars inside, outside. He tried to cut down under Amick and got up on his left front, went up over his left front wheel and just flipped him upside down. Michael was headed down lower in the 54 car, shot him back up the racetrack. That's when he drove across the left front of uh, Lyndon Amick's car. Two years ago, he took a bad tumble at Daytona and flipped from the trioval all the way down to turn one.
and uh, Spider-Man. A rough day for the uh, the Web One. That's a great ride if you go to Universal Studios. Welcome back to Texas, the NASCAR Boy Series presented by Old Spice. Today's race, the O'Reilly Auto Parts 300. You saw Michael Waltrip's car that they flipped over and put on the rollback. Let's see Michael Waltrip. Matt? Well, Mike, he has walked out of the infield care center. First off, you okay, Michael? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, I don't really know what happened other than I, I slowed down and someone ran over me and, and I flipped. So I'm not real sure what led up to all that. But, you know, NASCAR does a great job with, uh, with the safety personnel. Um, so when they got there and it was on fire, they put it out. But uh, we still have to do something about how little these cars were. I was trapped. I mean, I couldn't get out of it. And, uh, you know, there's still room inside of the cars to make them bigger without doing anything. Just mandate how, how, how big the roll cages have to be. And my car was uh, probably a little bit smaller than it should have been, and I couldn't get out of it. And uh, that's a concern of mine. But uh, thankfully, they were right there to, uh, to, to attend to me, and I got out. How scary was that? Because this is the second time in over a year you've had to crawl out the side window at Michigan in your cup car and now this. <laughs> it wasn't scary. I don't care, you know, it just, you just Come think, on. I just, you just, it, you just, the only thing you're scared of is uh, when you can't see where you're going that you're going to hit something. And so you're hanging on thinking, please don't hit anything, please don't hit anything. And when it stops and you hit anything, then you just think about getting out. And when I couldn't get out, that sucked, but. Uh, the Aaron's Dream Machine will race another day, and so will Michael. Tomorrow, I hope, for all our fans on Fox, check us out. It'll be a great race tomorrow. I think the track is widening out. I'd already gotten up on the outside a little bit and saw some success with it early in this race. So uh, I think that you'll see a great race tomorrow. Hats off to Texas Motor Speedway. They paved this place and did a fine job. And thank God for these fans, man. They are so fanatical about our sport. It's a lot of fun to be down here in Texas. Once a year, anyway. Who wouldn't like to come twice as cool as it is down here? Glad to see you okay, Mike. Let's go to Jeff Hammond. Jeff? Guys, you're wondering about how to, well, Michael was able to crawl out of that car and why the roof didn't collapse. Let me show you right quick. Look down inside here on our cutaway car. You see this big halo bar that goes around? They also have a bar that runs right beside the driver's head here to help support the roof in case he gets on his, on his lid. Also, they've got a bar that runs to the center of the car all the way up through to this right front corner to help support this halo bar also. All these things are done with the idea, in case you do get upside down, the car will not collapse, the roof will not collapse on the driver and give an opportunity to get out. But as you can see, this is a pretty confined area. As big as Michael is trying to get by his headrest, down by probably his air condition, and out the side window for a guy that's what, 6'5", 240 pounds, it's not an easy task. But again, you see Michael Walker get out of his car without any kind of injury because of the way these cars are built. Daryl? Yeah, Jeff, I was just going to say that if you, uh, you look at the angle of the windshield bar, too, uh, how much that, that's one of the reasons why we had to add those little bars there uh, on top of the door bars. Uh, there's, the windshields lay back so far in these cars now that they had to add a lot of bars in there to keep the roof uh, from coming down or the bars from caving in on the drivers when they got upside down. And all those row bars are what we call 095, almost an eighth of an inch thick wall, seamless tubing. So, I mean, it's about the best tubing you can buy, inch and three quarter in diameter. Give an attaboy to Mr. Let's Make a Deal. Kenny Wallace drove right through the middle of all that, and I think he got through unscathed. Yes, he did. Now, this is from Kevin Harvick. Harvick did a pretty darn good job, too, because he's going down there, headed right into the middle of disaster. Whoa. Turned back up, up the on the track, minute. and here comes Michael, and he's just lucky he didn't get run over. Harvick's lucky he didn't get run over from, uh, like, that 18 car, for no. instance. All right, the car that triggered all this was Lyndon Amick. Matt's with him. Well, Mike, he, too, has walked out of the infield care center. You look all right, Lyndon. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just, uh, man, I don't know what happened. I got down in the middle of the corner, and it's just, like, snap, turned around. Uh, you know, I, I didn't feel like I was out of the groove or anything. I don't know. If I got hit or not, we don't. I'm driving the car, so whatever happened is uh, uh, at uh, at the end is my fault, I guess. But you know, uh, Dr. Pepper, this is their home track, and we're trying to promote the movie Spider-Man. And uh, that was a great paint scheme. It was. It's awesome paint scheme. It's tore up now. He was in there. Uh, he was trying to help me, but he, he couldn't get over there quick enough. But uh, you know, we just hated that Dr. Pepper. Are great people, and uh, just trying to do the best we can here. Uh, hopefully, this monkey will get off our back, and we can do something next week. What Lennon was talking about, they had a Spider-Man action figure 
bungee corded to the roll bar. He's done for the day. Yeah, Lyndon's spidey sense didn't uh, didn't help in that time. Tough break for him.